My guest today is Ray Kurzweil. He's a computer scientist, software developer, inventor, entrepreneur, philosopher, and leading proponent of radical life extension. He has a 27-year track record as a futurist and the subject of the widely acclaimed documentary, The Transcendent Man. Bill Gates has called him the best in the world at predicting the future. When Ray Kurzweil makes a prediction, lots of folks listen. Kurzweil sees a day when microscopic computers will make all kinds of learning as easy as downloading. You're saying millions of tiny computers floating around in my head? Welcome, Ray. How are you? Great to be with you. You're, you're looking younger and younger every time I see you. <laughs> well, I'm working on it. So a futurist is someone who predicts the future. How do you know uh, what's coming? Well, it has to do with information. It follows this very predictable exponential course. So uh, we can make certain predictions about what will happen. I predicted the emergence of the World Wide Web, for example, because I saw the predecessor to it growing exponentially. I predicted computer would take the World Chess Championship in 98. It happened in 97. I made that prediction in the early 80s. Predicted that the Soviet Union would go away. I made that prediction when the Soviet Union was going strong in the 80s, um, and, and so on. There's certain aspects of the future uh, that are predictable if you follow this particular method. Uh, the power of computers per unit currency has been a very smooth, predictable trajectory since the 1890 American census. In fact, this computer I carry around is several billion times more powerful per dollar than the computer I used when I was an undergraduate. Uh, this will be the size of a blood cell in 25 years and a billion times more powerful per dollar compared to this. Uh, we will put them inside our bloodstream, keeping us healthy from inside, uh, a robotic white blood cell to augment our immune system, and that's just one application. Um, you're talking about nanobots. Can you explain nanobots to my audience? Well, a nanobot is a robot, and it happens to be very small. It's about the size of a blood cell. Uh, so there'll be a lot of applications where we have these things inside our body keeping us healthy. Uh, we'll ultimately have robotic red blood cells that can actually keep us oxygenated for hours, even if we have a heart attack. We'll have robotic white blood cells, which I mentioned, which can destroy cancer. Uh, and these, these devices will go through and repair every cell in our body uh, from disease before it becomes life-threatening. So these are uh, little blood cell-sized robots that will inject into us, correct? Right, and they have computers in them. They're smart. They'll be on the internet. We can download new software. So some new disease comes along that we never saw before. We'll actually be able to download new software so that it can combat it. Uh, so we'll become a hybrid of both biological and non-biological intelligence. Well, some of these will go in our brain, interact with our biological neurons, and make us smarter, put our brains on the internet, provide full immersion virtual reality from within the nervous system. Uh, so these are just a few of the applications. So this is uh, true life extension because it's a restoration versus the deterioration that we're now experiencing. We talk about three bridges to radical life extension. Bridge one is what you talk about a lot and I've written about also, which is what you can do right now to extend life and stay young. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're doing great at that. Uh, but that's just a bridge to the full flowering of biotechnology, which is a little bit different than the nanobots. It's basically reprogramming the software of life uh, for life extension, turning off genes that promote illness and aging, turning on genes that protect us. When I interviewed you for my book, uh, you said that this technology, we'd start to be able to access it in about 13, 15 years. What's, what am I going to be bio, able to access Biotechnology is underway now. There's mm -hmm. already a few fruits of it. That really will be mature starting in about 10 years. 15 years from now, we'll be adding more than a year every year to your remaining life expectancy. So that's kind of a tipping point. Nanotechnology is the third bridge. That's going to be 20 to 30 years out. But it's not like we have nothing until then. There's the whole biotechnology revolution, which is beginning to unfold right now. You basically can deactivate a gene that's promoting disease. One like gene diabetes? we'd like to turn off is the fat, fat insulin receptor gene that basically says hold on to every calorie. And that gene was turned off in animals, and these animals ate a lot and remained slim. They got the benefits of caloric restriction while doing the opposite, and 
the Johnson Diabetes Center is working with a pharmaceutical company to bring that to the human market. The possibilities are so mind-boggling. It seems to me that then the killer diseases that we're all afraid of, uh, diabetes, um, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, um, in the future, if we get there healthy, uh, we don't have to worry that that's going to be our terrible end, right? Uh, I, I believe, you know, with, within 10 years, certainly within 15, these diseases will be under control just from biotechnology, from reprogramming biology. And it's a different method, methodology than we've used before. So far, most of the drugs on the market were developed through something called drug uh, discovery, which basically meant just finding something that happened to work, looking for something that kills HIV or lowers blood pressure. We're now actually understanding how biology works and learning selectively to reprogram these different triggers away from these diseases. How long are you going to live, Ray? So people say, oh, you take all these supplements, that's going to enable you to live several hundred years? Uh, no, that's going to enable me to get to a point maybe 15, 20 years from now when we have bridge two, mm. which are these very powerful technologies mm -hmm. we've talked about in biology. And that will then give be a bridge to bridge three, the nanobots that keep you healthy from inside. And that will give us much more time and lead us to a point where we can actually back up parts of our bodies and brain by you know, gathering the information that comprise us. People wax philosophically, oh, I don't want to live past 100. You know, I'd like to see them say that when they are 100, <laughs> particularly if they're 100 and look 30 yeah. uh, and are productive. It begs the question, though, how are we going to feed everybody? The same technologies that are extending life are also going to expand resources. For example, applying nanotechnology uh, to solar panels is bringing down the cost of solar panels. The amount of solar energy, therefore, is on an exponential rise. It's doubling every two years. It's only eight doublings from meeting 100% of the world's energy needs. There are new technologies that are coming for water and food. Food, mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole, there will be a revolution called vertical agriculture where we grow a very healthy food, uh, in vitro plants for fruits and vegetables, and cloning muscle tissue for meat, uh, you can basically just clone that particular organ, which mm. is the muscle tissue, and uh, create uh, every kind of meat. And you can also, in, th in that process, make it very healthy. You know, uh, you blow my mind. You always do. Um, I love picking your brain. So. I enjoyed it again today, and I encourage all of you to go see the movie Transcendent in Man about him. It will blow your mind and read his incredible books, and look for him in my next book, Bombshell, um, where he tells you things that he didn't say in his other book. That's how I get you to buy mine. Okay, thanks for watching. Thank you, Rakers. Well, you're great. Bye-bye.